took care of my father in his uh, last years, and this is one of the last things I wrote to him. Um, it's called Falling Leaves, and there's an epigram at the beginning. It says, let us spend one day as deliberately as nature, and not be thrown off the track by every nutshell and mosquito's wing that falls on the rails. And that's Henry David Thoreau. Leaves fall, making patterns of burnt colors on the cold ground of my life. Endless days of raking them into piles against the winds bury my smiles. For I focus on the tidiness rather than the laughter in life's messiness. But life is found in broken wings, in cracks nutshells, even in piles of dead leaves. Life refuses to be tidied by the stubborn rules of my old handmade rake. The leaf of my father hung stubbornly, refusing to join his brothers on the ground. And as I waited for the silent hush of his fall, I forced myself to stop raking long enough to see the beauty in his changing colors, to laugh with him as he spun in the wind from his frail stem. first came to town three years ago, I, love, I, love, I fell in love with the uh, birds and vibes at the bridge because there were people of color, there were straight people, there were not straight people, there were, it was just a nice mix of people which I uh, love about the birds and vibes and then it, uh, it dissipated and then I picked up the, the march and, and started my own open mic but they inspired me. The first time I was there, I'm new in town and I'm thinking, Cool, this is a poetry reading. Well, I'm sitting there, the old grandma in the house, and uh, and these kids come in, you know, with tattoos everywhere and pierced earrings and, and other parts pierced, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, what have I gotten myself into? And I and they called my name, and I said, no, nah, that's all right. And they insisted, and I read my poetry, and it was lovely, and I kept coming back. So two weeks later, because it was every other week, I wrote this, my first hip hop. I do a lot of, of spoken word and hip hop. Uh, anyway, this one's called Grandma's in the House. I hope I can do it without all the accoutrements. Stay. Okay. I was looking to read fine folks are like mine, share poetry of life, give and take in kind. I came to the house thinking it was word. I was first one there, felt a twinge absurd. Doorman asked, do you need the stage? I didn't know why. He looked so amazed. I felt out of place when I saw who showed. Pierce parts and inks was their tribal code. Pierce parts and inks were their tribal code. Pierce parts and inks was their tribal code. Such loud ass music right up in my ear and I don't know why. The box boom so near, words acted out loud. No tunes ever flee. Folks come to the house to hear poets read. Hear poets read. Hear poets read. Oh, the room's very young, so has grandma here? A culture brand new. I felt a little fear, but each said hello in a friendly way. I wanted to stick and hear what they'd say. I wanted to stick and hear what they'd say. I wanted to stick and hear what they'd say. When the first got up, I knew why the beat. The rhythm and word had turned up the heat. The rhythm and word had turned up the heat. The rhythm and word had turned up the heat. I never heard rap or hip hop new. Prejudice lives in us old ladies too. Prejudice lives in us old ladies too. Prejudice lives in us old ladies too. So I took an ear to the words he said while others joined in the chorus he led. They were moving to the beat, beat. Words were smoking, 
to the heat, heat. The speak was flying and all understood. There's one group brain, power to the hood, power to the hood, power to the hood. My turn came up. I turned back out. I tried to back out, said, I don't do you, so what up, they shout. My poetry spoke, quiet filled the room. Poets one and all, no, never more assume. Poets one and all, never more assume. Poets one and all, never more assume. I was one of them, they were part of me. We were all poets in the same posse. We were all poets in the same posse. We were all poets in the same posse. I was asked to come back in a couple of weeks and learn more ways to hear poets speak. Hear poets speak, hear poets speak. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta hear the little, you know, a little rhythm or something. All right. All right then. This is a, uh, I don't do Twitter. Well, I do Twitter, but you know, I'm, I'm, I do well to do Facebook. And uh, my, one of my granddaughters, God, signed me up for Instagram. Anyway, this is uh, called Twitnomena. It's uh, my new word, Twitnomenon. Instead of phenomenon, it's called a portmanteau for you English teachers, where you combine two words and you create something else. Okay, so this is twit nominon. And all of these words exist if you're a Twitter or a twit. <laughs> that covers most of us. That's right. Yeah. Either my eyes are getting better or I'm getting I don't know. Okay, here goes. Twit nominon. Increasingly outnumbered by tweeple. <laughs> Conversationalists are becoming extinct like dinosaurs on the social media moon. One friend of Palooza can recruit hundreds in a nanosecond in the Twittersphere. Just one of these movies can grab more by hosting a friend scrapping, like swapping keys with virtual friends. The hive mind grows exponentially, forcing out the old queen bee's order. Twitter flies have many followers, often becoming part of the Twitterati. Despite Twitiket, there are reckless bull twits, drunk twitters, and trash tweeters. Twaffic, I swear to God, it's a word. Twaffic <laughs> is jammed like a bad LA day with tweet salts, mistweets, and Twitter rage. Twishing and twit working can be dangerous, especially to naive new eaters. Searching for Twitter foria and higher twit rank, tweeter, tweeter boxes in overdrive risk becoming tweetaholics. By thumbing wildly in drive through tweets, drive by tweets, retweets, and detweets, often Twitter painted with telltale hand rash, some opt for twabstinence or inner Twitter to recover from lost weekends. Those in denial of hunger for more Twitter apps seeking bigger Twitter and followers for sale. In the name of twart, Twitterature has flowered into 140 character twikus, poet tweets, and novels in serial tweets. The tweet goes on. The tweet goes on. Tweets keep going faster every day. La di da di di. La di da di da. Tweets keep pounding a rhythm to the brain. La di da di di, la di da di da. The tweet goes on. The tweet goes on. All right. Here's another one that's my spin on uh, technology. Although I've done my own web page, I'm so amazed. I just, uh, just kind of. Fumford around and anyway, this one's called friendly. Another new word for me. Social media has redefined self worth in measures not measured by internal notches like a metronome for honest heartbeats, but by accounting records of follows, friends, and likes, like a peeping tecton. 
follows allow watching someone without being friends. Fairy tale profiles can be shared in the virtual world of voyeurs with no flirty foreshadow or live commentary. So friends can like and others can follow faster than speed dating without ever sharing air. A form of anonymous intimacy, an efficient method of world involvement without time consuming actual interaction. Audience selector and block features promote world peace by eliminating face-to-face -face confrontation or messy real-time improvisation. Controversial explanation is assassinated by the stealth computer. The profile pictures, executive producer has final say over timeline, events, and groups. So interior life stays just an internet away. Discomforts and disparities are censored with a click of the spam key. Reality becomes a manageable board game.